Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. The district attorney knows that the world of crime has many windows, and that only by looking through all of them may the truth be seen, because nothing is more dangerous than half-truth or half-knowledge. This case we're about to hear had its start three years before it came to my attention. Harry, I beg you, please don't go. You get out of here and let me pack, Doris. How can you do this? You're my husband. We're going to have a baby. The kind of doll I make... I'll go back to my job later, Harry. We'll make out. I'm making out right now. Out of here. I'll watch out for me. You watch out for you. You're in love with somebody else, aren't you? I'm not in love with you. I'll never give you a divorce, Harry. Now, you've been saying that for months. What else is new? Harry, I, I can't go through this alone. I need you. I love you. Please. Please don't do this to me. You're going to be a father. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Yeah, it means I'm going. Stay. Stay until morning, please, Harry. Harry, I'm frightened when I'm alone at night. This house is so isolated. Stop blabbering. Here. Here, I'll leave you my gun. Do me a favor. Blow your brains out. Harry. Get out of my way. Harry. Doris, put that down. Stay, Harry. No. No. Harry, what have I done? Harry! Harry! Get out of here. Get out of here before, before the police find out. I'll call the doctor. No, no, that's no good. It's my fault, Doris. Go, go on. Far away. Change your name. Harry. I was no good. Go for the... For the baby's sake. Uh, Harry. Harry. Harry! I just, I just got in from a movie. I've been trying to reach you for a couple of hours. Oh. I can't find the Sanderson papers in the files. Why, well, I, I put them on your desk. Thought you might work on them tonight. Well, just a second. <laughs> yes, here they are, all right, right under my nose. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Oh, it's, it's all right. I'm, I'm glad you called. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Uh-huh. Business as usual. Oh, well. Who? Who's in there? Don't be frightened, Edith. I waited for a couple of hours. Then your landlady let me in. You seem to know me. Do I know you? Doris Griffin. Uh, I mean, Doris Lloyd, before I was married. We went to high school together. Yes. 
last I heard of you, you were modeling. Yes. And then I married Her Harry Griffin. Here. Here, you'd better sit down. Now, what's the matter? Why did you come to see me? You work for Mr. Garrett, the district attorney. Yes. Well, I have to go to him. I'm afraid to go alone. Have you done something? I killed my husband. Oh, I see. When did this happen? Three years ago. Our baby was coming. He was going to leave me. Where's the baby now? I gave him out for adoption in Baltimore last week. That's where I ran to after I shot Harry. I want to face it and get it over with. I want you to take me to Mr. Carrot. Well, he's at the office working tonight. I'll go in and talk to him, but you're in no condition to go anyplace tonight. You try to sleep and I'll be back. There's nothing in that file either, Miss Miller. I know. Perhaps the old files in the storeroom? Three years and then solved? No, it should be right here. I should remember it for that matter, and I don't. You sure it happened in this county? She said right here in the city. Well, Hank will be up from the record bureau in a minute. They'll be certain to have it there. I may have misfiled it. Oh, you don't usually. It looks like I did this time. Chief? Well, you just saved us a job, Harrington. What have you got? Sore eyes from looking. No record? Chief, there hasn't been anybody named Griffin murdered in this county since 1892. There's no report of any such murder in the files, and we have no wanted sheet out on any Doris Griffin. But that's impossible, Harrington. <laughs> Nothing is impossible, Miss Miller. You've been here long enough to know that. We get a dozen confessions a month to crimes that never happened, or from people who didn't commit crimes that did happen. He's right, Miss Miller. Your old schoolmate seems to have all the symptoms of a psychopath. She wasn't lying to me, Mr. Garrett. People who are mentally sick sometimes believe that they've done something they haven't. Miss Miller, I'd like to arrest a murderer. It's my job. But we can't arrest anybody for a murder that hasn't happened. Unless, of course, your friend's story isn't complete. She probably never had a husband or a baby. Or if she did have a husband and shot him, as she says, it wasn't a case of hysteria or temporary insanity. What makes you say that? The simple fact that no body was found, which would indicate she didn't just run. She hid the body or stripped it of its identity first. Oh, yes. It would have to be that way, wouldn't it? You better get on this again, Harrington. Well, what do you want this time, Chief? Marriage license bureau. Make sure there's a record of a Doris Lloyd marrying a Harry Griffin. Mm -hmm. Then if you're sure there was a Harry Griffin, check our records and the records of the surrounding counties for all unidentified bodies found during the probable period of the murder. Uh... You gonna wait here for it? No, dig up what you can and bring it to Miss Miller's apartment. We'll be there. Come along, Miss Miller. Yes, sir. She's in the bedroom. In the state you say she was in, if she's asleep, we'd better let her rest for a while. I'll look. Yeah, she's asleep, all right. No, no, she isn't. Where's the light switch? I'll get it. Her eyes are wide open. She looks so strange. Doris. Doris, are you all right? Get some water, Miss Miller, right away. What is it? She's in a state of emotional shock. Get the water. I'll open some windows. Mrs. Griffin. Mrs. Griffin, try to talk. Sorry, Miss Miller. I'm coming. Get the water. Smelling salts, too. Good. Here, open your mouth, Mrs. Griffin. Try to drink some of this. She won't touch it. Try the salts. <laughs> well, she's in bad shape. We better have her taken to the hospital. Where's your phone? On the dressing table. Smell this, Doris. Come on, breathe, breathe, please. Operator? 
Get me the general hospital. No, don't push it away. It'll help you. Hello. This is Paul Garrett, the district Angel. attorney. Ambulance emergency. I don't Road 49 try to get Hooper. Out. Apartment 4D. Hi. Harry. Is he, is he calling an ambulance for Harry? Yes. Yes, now, now just lie back and rest until it comes. Everything's going to be all right. Is that her purse on the chair or yours? It's hers. We'd better take the liberty of looking into it. The papers are probably in the billfold. Driver's license, Baltimore, Maryland. That's where she went when she ran away. Name on it is Doris Lloyd, though. Same on her social security card. That was her maiden name. Might be her only name. Uh, she might have resumed it after the murder. What are those? Newspaper clippings, the one ads. Help wanted and rooms to rent. Apparently she didn't come to you as soon as she arrived in town. How do you know? Papers dated last week. A couple of ads circled in pencil. Help wanted. Dress manufacturers. She used to be a model. And that whole section is circled. How about the rentals? And just one single room, $14 a week. 6611 West Homedale Avenue. She might have been living there. We'll have to check it. And that'll be Harrington. You stay with her. I'll get it. Hi, Chief. How did you make out? Maverick's license bureau was another blank. I guess we were right the first time, then. I don't know. They might have been married in another state. Well, that's a possibility, of course. But what makes you think so? Well, I did find a record on a Harry Griffin. What? Yeah, this. Magistrate court. Five years ago. Charge was wife beating. Wife's name was Doris. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dismissed when she refused to press charges. Yep. It could be other people with the same name. No. This is occupation as dress designer. Hers is a model. She had a husband, all right. <coughs> this kind of... Hold on, Miss Miller. Grab a Harrington. I have to. Go ahead. I, well, I didn't want to hit her. That was the only way. Carry her into the living room. Okay. You all right, Miss Miller? She scratched me a little, that's all. Thought I had her calm down. She was staring at the window, jumped up suddenly, and tried to throw herself out. She's a very sick girl. Sounds like an ambulance coming, Chief. Yes, I sent for it. Did Harrington find out anything about her husband? Yes, yeah, she was married, all right. Maybe she still is. I don't get you, Chief. We know there was a living Harry Griffin. The court record you found proved that. Yeah. We still haven't found any trace of a dead Harry Griffin. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the missing corpse, here's an important message I'd like you to hear. And now, back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A woman had confessed to the three-year-old murder of her husband, but the body had never been discovered. Our police files showed no record of such a murder. I went to talk to the landlady in an address circled in a newspaper advertisement we found in the woman's purse, an address where Doris Griffin might have rented a room. Yeah, yeah, stop your knocking. I'm sorry. Your doorbell seems to be out of order. Rooms are $14 a week and no cooking. Well, I'm not looking for a room. I'm looking for information. Do you have a tenant named Doris Griffin? No. How about Doris Lloyd? No. That one. Who are you? My name's Paul Garrett. I'm the district attorney. Oh. And she's in trouble, is she? I can't say it gives me any surprise. None whatsoever. Why do you say that? Oh, them sweet young things... They're all the same. I only lived here a week, but the men, oh, the men, how they telephoned her. Do you mean men or a man? Well, 
I don't know for sure. I didn't think you did. The phone is right there in the hall. You must have answered it. Well, I did, mostly. Maybe it was one man. Had a funny voice. Kind of hoarse it was, like I had a cold. Did he ever leave his name? No, never said. Just ask for Doris Lloyd. Did she ever tell you who the man was? She did not. I see. Did the man ever come here? No, nope, she never had a visitor in the week she was here. Did the phone call start the day she came? No, no, she went job hunting that day. Started the day after. Oh, that'd be last Thursday. After they started, she didn't go looking for work. She just stayed in her room and cried. I see. Thank you. You'll see her, her rent's due again. I'll be holding her back. I'm sure you will. Miss Miller? Oh, Mr. Garrett. Is Harrington back yet? Just came in a minute ago. He's waiting in your office. Well, what are you working on? Monthly report to the mayor. Now let it go. Go over to the general hospital and see how Doris Griffith is making out. Yes, sir. Tell the doctor I'd like to know as soon as she's in condition for me to talk to her. Yes, sir. Hello, Chief. Got anything? Yes. She rented a room all right. How about those dress manufacturers? Well, I checked the whole list. She hit them all last Wednesday. Filled out job applications. They know anything about her? No. Only that she seemed very nervous. In one place, they said they thought she was crazy. Why? Well, she filled out the application the secretary gave her, and she was waiting for an interview with the boss. He was out to lunch. When he came in, she took one look at him and ran out. Didn't even wait to talk to him. In which place was that? The uh, Frederick Grant Company, a big new outfit. You talked to Grant? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Well, why not? Well, he wasn't there, Chief. Secretary said he'd been home all week, not feeling well. As a matter of fact, he went right home after this thing happened with the Griffin girl. You get Grant's home address? It's a big place in the Ferndale Estates District. Too swanky for house numbers. I'll find it. I'm going out there. You meet Miss Miller at General Hospital and wait for me. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Garrett. I was dressing when the maid brought your card up. I'm Mrs. Grant. I guess the maid misunderstood me. It was your husband I wanted to see. Oh, well, he hasn't been feeling well. The staff has orders. He isn't to be disturbed. Perhaps I can help you. Well, possibly. Oh, well, won't you sit down? Thank you. You have a lovely home. Oh, thank you. Just what is it you came here about? I wanted to get some information about a Mrs. Griffin. Mrs. Harry Griffin. That name mean anything to you? Well, I can't say that it does. Have you ever heard your husband mention her? No. Should he have? Perhaps. Perhaps not. If I could ask him directly... Are you in here, Elizabeth? Oh, yes, dear. For the last time, haven't I told you... Oh, I didn't realize you had company. Mr. Garrett, this is my husband, Mr. Grant. Mr. Grant? Hello. Elizabeth, I want to talk to you as soon as you're free. I'll be in the study. Oh, I can step outside for a moment if you'd like. Uh, that won't be necessary, Mr. Garrett. What's the matter now, Fred? I thought you were leaving for Acapulco tonight. Now Johnson tells me you've unpacked. That's right. Why? Because I don't want to go. Mr. Garrett, perhaps you'd better excuse us after all. I'm sorry we subjected you to this. Oh, don't apologize, Mrs. Grant. It's been very enlightening. Now, what kind of a smart crack is that? Who are you, anyhow? What are you doing here? Perhaps the name escaped you. Garrett. Paul Garrett. I'm the district attorney. Oh. As for what I'm doing here, I can make that very brief. Do you know a Mrs. Harry Griffin? What is this, some kind of a riddle game? Is that supposed to be an answer? I never heard the name before in my life. Anything else? No, that's all. For now. Good day. Doc said it's okay to see her, Chief, but isn't going to do any good. Why not? She's under heavy sedation. Miss Miller's sitting with her, but she doesn't even recognize her. Oh, it's the next room. If we question her while she's relaxed, half asleep, we may get something. Hello? 
home, Miss Miller. Oh. We've got to try to question her. She's barely conscious. It may help. Doris. I mean that I, I see him all the time. His face. You shot him, Doris. The baby. He was sleeping. What did you do with the gun, Doris? I threw it. Threw it away. Threw it in the water. Where? Where on the water, Doris? Wallace. Wallace Pond. <laughs> it's all right, Doris. Go to sleep. It's all right. Care of her, Miss Miller. Yes, sir. Come on, Harrington. Now we've got something to go on. Wallace Pond? Yes. Call for a lab squad. We're going to drag for that gun. We may find more than the gun. We may find Harry Griffin's body. I doubt it, Harrington. I doubt it very much. I told you to cover that end systematically. Your bare feet will find anything on the bottom. Those hooks are only stirring up mud. Thank you. Uh, a lot of junk down here, Chief. I should have been born with fingers on my feet instead of toes. Feel something? Yeah. Metallic. Solid. Right under my foot. Yep. I got it. Uh, cake with mud, but it's a gun, all right. Bring it out. All right, men. We've got it. Revolver. Small caliber. Only a twenty-two. Open the chamber. See if it's been fired. Uh, Rusted. Uh, uh. Three chambers empty. Hey. What is it? Let me empty this cylinder. Look. There's three shells aren't fired. Those are blank cartridges. Oh, sure they are. Yeah, this is the wrong gun. No, Harrington, I don't think so. Now I'm convinced that I know where to find Harry Griffith's body. Where? In a very luxurious home belonging to Mrs. Frederick Grant. Or maybe at the airport, waiting for a place to out the Poco. Let's go. Hey, hey, my shoes. Put them on in the car. Oh, ouch. Oh. Just a minute, mister. Let go of me. My plane's loaded. Your name Frederick Grant? That's... No. No, it isn't. Well, let's go over there to the baggage room until we find out what it really is, huh? Let go. I said the baggage room, mister. Ah, ah, you're breaking my arm. Not if you stop twisting. Just walk. In. Hello, Mr. Grant. I'll have you broken for this. Making me miss a plane. I've got the money and the influence to do it, too. You mean your wife has, don't you? Your present wife. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you'll understand better if I call you by your right name. Harry Griffin. You're crazy. That's not my name. Easy enough to prove. Harry Griffin was arrested once on a charge of wife beating. Police have his fingerprints. Make it easy on yourself, mister. All right. I, I was married to Doris once, but it was a mistake. I, I wanted out. She wouldn't give me a divorce... I met another woman, Elizabeth, my wife now. Keep talking, Griffin. Elizabeth had money. She didn't know I was married. I told her my name was Frederick Grant. Marrying her meant a chance to build something big, a company of my own, but Doris was in the way, ready to stick me with somebody else to take care of, a baby. Yes. And you were afraid to kill her, so you made her think she killed you. Who told you where to find me? Elizabeth? She didn't have to tell me. I knew she wasn't going to be using that plane ticket. 
I figured you wouldn't want it to go to waste. Come on, mister. There's a nice cell waiting for you. You can turn on the water in the sink and make believe you're in Acapulco. You take him in, Harrington. I have to wait here for a while to meet an arriving passenger. Who? Doris Griffin's little boy. I called the people who were going to adopt him. They're sending him back to his mother. Chief, she's in no condition of... No, but someday soon, when she knows the truth, she will be. This is David Bryan. I hope you enjoy this case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here's the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Harry Griffin, alias Frederick Grant, was convicted on charges of bigamy and fraud. He is serving a 10 to 20 year sentence in the state penitentiary. Doris Griffin, completely recovered, is operating a very successful school for models and raising her son in a manner that meets with the complete approval of juvenile authorities. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the files of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. Mm-hmm.